Hey guys, it's Tyler from Nelly Security, and in today's video, we're going to review our newest generation of our video doorbell, the NSC DB2. Now, if you're in the market for a video doorbell, there are a couple of big problems that you're gonna run into with most doorbell models, mostly pertaining to annual or monthly fees and storage. Now, not only does our NSC DB2 have better specs than most other doorbell cameras out there, but it also solves these two problems for you. Video recording is a feature that most people want with their doorbell cameras, but it's also something that a lot of people don't understand. That's why some people are willing to throw down $300 a year just to get access to 30 days of recording. But here's the bottom line, and if you don't get anything else from this video, get this. You don't have to pay for cloud storage. I'll say it again for the people in the back. You don't need to pay $30 or $10 or even $3 a month for cloud storage. Cloud storage is not only overpriced, but it's not necessarily that safe. Now sure, your video is gonna be stored very securely on high-tech servers, but the point is your video footage will be stored on their servers. It doesn't belong to you. You don't know where it is, and there's no guarantee that those servers will even be there tomorrow. But if you record and store your footage locally, either to an SD card or to a hard drive on an NVR, you know exactly where that footage is. You always have access to it, and you have complete and total control over that footage. And this, my friends, is where the NSC DB2 comes into play. We could be just like all the other companies and charge you a monthly fee for cloud storage, but we know how frustrating it is when you find a product that looks perfect, but then you notice that asterisk. You see the fine print that tells you if you want to take full advantage of this product, you're going to have to fork over more money every single month. Rest assured that our video doorbell has no asterisks. There's no fine print, there's no hidden fees, once you purchase the NSC DB2, it's yours. All the footage is completely under your control. It does have a slot for a micro SD card and it can hold up to 128 gigabytes of storage within the doorbell itself. Also, these cameras are OnViv compatible. So what that means is you can connect these to an NVR as long as it's OnViv compliant, such as one of our H series or R series NVRs. At that point, you're pretty much restricted only by your NVR's hard drive storage. Now, there are really so many other great features about this doorbell that I don't know where to begin. It's completely DIY. Since the wiring hooks into your current doorbell's wiring, there's really not that much you have to do. It's super easy, and uh, here in a couple minutes, I'll show you just how easy it is. It includes all the hardware, even the drill bit. Okay, the drill's not included. The camera itself is three megapixels, which is awesome. So for some perspective, ring doorbells shoot in 1080p, or two megapixels. Simply safe. 2 megapixels. Nest doorbell, slightly less than 2 megapixels. So all the top video doorbells out there just can't even compete. And the field of view on this thing is just incredible. 180 degrees vertical field of view. Compare that with rings and simply safes, 162 degree horizontal field of view, which isn't even going to show you an entire person head to toe. Again, this camera just blows its competition out of the water. It has dual Wi-Fi, so it can connect to a 2.4 gigahertz or a 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi connection. It has PIR, true human motion detection, so your phone and your storage won't be totally blown up by false motion detection alarms from other pixel-based motion detection systems. Full duplex two-way talk, so you can very simply communicate with whoever's standing on your doorstep. This camera has 16-foot night vision, and it does have infrared, but it also has a, a really good low light sensor, so you can decide if you wanna use the infrared or not, and you'll still be able to see pretty well in the dark. All right, that's enough jibber jabber. Let's go ahead and open this box and see what's inside. So here's the box for the NSC DB2, and you'll see on the front we have a QR code. If you scan that code, it'll take you to a website with a setup guide, and it'll walk you through everything you need to know about setting up your doorbell with the EZVs application. When we open this up, the first thing we see is the doorbell and the quick start guide. In the quick start guide, you'll find everything you need to know about wiring the camera, installing it on your wall at your door. Really helpful information in there. Now in this first level of the package, we have the doorbell itself. We have a screwdriver with the two different sides. We have three different wedge mounts here depending on what kind of shape and configuration you need for your doorbell. There's also a, a foam mounting plate 
or if the wall where you're mounting your doorbell is a little rough. We've got two more colored face plates here if you prefer a black doorbell or a brown doorbell. And here is the doorbell itself. This face plate just comes off here. Underneath the doorbell is this little box which has everything else you need. Here's our mounting hardware. They even include the drill bit here for you so you can use a drill to get uh, precise holes. If you're gonna be using the doorbell itself with no mechanical or digital chime, you'll use this fuse wire. This is the wire harness. You'll actually use this to uh, connect the doorbell to the current chime that you have. Uh, you're also going to connect this power kit to your current chime using this harness. It also comes with this level. And as you can see, this level is nicely secures into all of these mounting plates so that you can make sure your installation is level. Finally, we have these four wire caps to secure all the connections that you're gonna be making in your doorbell. Now let's take a closer look at this doorbell itself. So down here is the button, and this actually glows blue once it's powered up. Uh, it's got the QR code there that you can scan to set this camera up on the EZV's application. This plastic button right here is the reset button. Here is the PIR motion detector, and here is the camera. Right here we have the microphone for two-way audio. On the side here we have the slot for a micro SD card. On the back we have the holes for the wires. It's going to be these U-shaped wires. We also have the holes for your doorbell screws which are going to screw into the mounting plate. And on the bottom these are the security screws. So once your face plate is on there nice and tight you can insert the security screws. To do that, you'll actually have to use the other side of the screwdriver here. That'll just prevent people from coming along, taking the faceplate off, uh, tampering around in there, taking your micro SD card. Also on the bottom, we have our speakers also for the two-way audio. Well, that's about it for the unboxing. Let's jump over to our tech room and see how we can get this thing all set up and ready to go. Now we have this sample doorbell set up here at Nelly's, and if you have a mechanical chime, yours is probably going to look very similar, so you can kind of see what to do and how to set up your own doorbell. Now we're going to be working in two spots here, at your front door where your current doorbell is installed, and then at the location of your chime. It looks a lot like this, it'll have a cover on top of it. Now if you don't know where this is, just ring your doorbell and follow the sound of your chime. Now the first thing you're going to want to do before doing anything else is shut off the breaker that supplies power to your doorbell. Now that that breaker is turned off, go ahead and go to your front door and remove your current doorbell. You will see two wires on the back. Go ahead and unhook those wires, but hang on to them because those are the wires that we're going to use to install our new video doorbell. Now on the back of your doorbell, you'll see those two holes in the back for the wires. You're going to want to take these black U-shaped wires, go ahead and screw them down, and then attach them to your previous doorbell's wires using these orange wire caps. It doesn't really matter which wire goes where. The red wire is wired to your transformer, which takes power from your house and reduces it to uh, an appropriate voltage for your doorbell, since doorbells really don't take that much power to work. Uh, the black wire here is the one that was actually wired to your chime. So once those wires are connected to your doorbell, you can go ahead and put that into place. Next, you're going to want to go to your chime. Now, if you have a mechanical chime, these are all pretty standard, so you're gonna follow pretty much the exact same steps that I'm showing you here. If you have a digital chime, on the other hand, you're gonna want to refer to your manufacturer's manual and see how they tell you to set this up because those are a little bit different. But here we have a mechanical chime, so it's gonna be super easy. What we're gonna need here is our power booster, our wire harness, and a screwdriver. As you can see on this doorbell, it has three hooks, one for front, one for back, and one for the transformer. Now, when you take the cover off the chime and come to this for the first time, you'll see this red wire attached to the transformer hook and the black wire attached to the front. So it's pretty self-explanatory. The red wire goes right to the transformer and the black wire goes directly to your front doorbell. We're actually going to take those off and hold on to them because again, we're still gonna be using these wires, but we need to add this power booster here. 
we're going to plug the wire harness into the power booster. The black wire has two ends, so we're going to put the main end into the front hook, and we're going to connect the other end to the original black wire using one of these wire caps. We're gonna do the same exact thing with the transformer hook, And that's it, we're basically done. I know that might sound a little complicated, especially if you've never seen your doorbell chime before or if you've never worked with wiring, but I promise it's a lot easier than it sounds. If you just take a look at that quick start guide and follow the wiring diagrams that they have, you'll have this thing set up in no time at all. So then once you have it all set up, go ahead and turn your breaker back on. As it boots up, you'll see that this light turns red, and then once it's good to go, it'll start flashing blue. Now our doorbell is a solid blue color right now, that's because we've already set this up. Uh, we have another video of this actually showing how we set this up using the EasyVs application. Just go to YouTube or Google and type in NSC DB2 setup guide and that video will pop right up. Or again, you can just scan the QR code on your box and it'll take you right to the blog post where we walk you through everything you need to know about setting this up on the EasyVs application. After you do that, everything should be in working order, so I'm gonna go ahead and push this doorbell button and see what happens. Now once your doorbell is all set up and you've gotten a few recordings, you can access those directly from this application. Just at the very bottom there, you can click Video History, and that will bring up a timeline of all the recordings saved on your camera's SD card. From the home screen, you can also click Messages down there uh, to see a different layout of these events. If you click on an event, you can see a little bit more info there, and you can click Playback to actually watch that recording happen. You can either take a snapshot of that recording or hit record to save that recording directly to your phone's camera roll. You can click storage status here to check out your memory card uh, to see how much space you have left. It'll also tell you down here when the earliest recording date and time was so you can always see what your oldest footage is and Again, this just allows you to take as much control over your storage as possible. If you can see that you're getting close to a date that you want to keep, you can go ahead and change out your SD card if you need to, or just download all that footage, whatever you need to do. But again, the SD card in your doorbell is not the only way to save videos from this doorbell. You can also save videos directly to your NVR. This also gives you the option to do 24-7 recording, which you can't exactly do from the doorbell itself. So now I'm gonna hop onto the NVR, get this thing added, and we can see everything that this camera's OnViv compatibility brings to the table. So early this morning, I went ahead and connected this NSC DB2 to our H-Series 8-channel NVR. And it's been recording all day long, uh, both continuously and for events. Let me hop on here and show you some of the settings that I have, and then we'll take a look at some playback. So to set this up, go into your menu, click camera, and you're going to want to manually edit one of these channels. Now to do that, make sure the adding method is manual and not plug and play. You'll change the protocol to onvif and put in whatever your doorbell camera's IP address is, which you can find using a simple configuration tool such as SADP. Input your username, which is admin, and your password, which is gonna be your doorbell's verification code. Click OK and everything should be good to go. Now, I'm going to go into my menu and storage and you'll see that I have this set up for my first channel with continuous recording all the time. So what that's gonna look like once I head into my playback, I'm going to check this channel and search for today you'll see that we have this long blue line. And the length of this blue line is how long that this camera has been recording today. Again, in this situation, I've only been recording for a couple of hours, but this line could stretch for days depending on how much storage you have available on your NVR. Now the blue color here is the regular continuous recording, but all these red lines scattered throughout the timeline are PIR events. So we can easily see at a very quick glance how many PIR motion detection events happened throughout this recording. Well, that's how to set up your doorbell for recording and playback directly from your NVR. Before we close out this video, check out some of this sample footage from a live install of one of these video doorbells. Oh, 
Sweet! A new Nelly's camera came in. Hey, what's up? Hey, I'm here. All right, the door's unlocked. You can go ahead and come in. Okay. Well, that's about it for this video. I hope it showed you just how awesome these NSC DB2 video doorbell cameras really are. It's a great step up from all the competition out there at a very competitive price. To learn more or to purchase yours today, head on over to www.nellysecurity.com and search for doorbell. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our YouTube channel or follow us on Facebook. We have a ton of other security related content for you to check out. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.